Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nocturnal Gaming Network. My name is Zira, and today we are once again playing Space Flight Simulator. And today, today we're doing something special. We are going to be making a large and very complicated, very convoluted satellite. And uh, basically the point of this thing it's going to be a communication satellite slash, you know, research. It's going to have a really, really big telescope on it. And it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be right at the border of Earth's sphere of influence. So we're talking 29,000 kilometers away from Earth. And I realize that's not that far, like, in relative real life terms. But I mean, in this game, we're... We're way away from Earth, right? So, this thing, in my mind, the reason we're doing it is because we need something. We need something that can um, basically communicate with Earth and amplify the signals from Earth and to Earth. So stuff further out in the solar system, let's say Pluto, for example, right? Pluto, it's probably going to be pretty hard to get a signal to Pluto. Uh, so I think we need, you know, something at the solar system, probably something halfway to Pluto, you know, etc. We'll have a couple of these communication satellites, and that way we're able to keep in contact with our stuff. Uh, so let's, let's begin the build here and, you know, like normal, we're just going to start off with the fairing, put the fairing right here. Uh, not that one. We can't use that one. We need the small and then we can skip one and then we can skip another one and then we can do the one final piece. Now, this... This is a very, very complicated build here, uh, and it involves multiple pieces. So we're going to start, and we're just going to go down <laughs> down the list here um, because I don't want to screw this build up. Uh, and I worked very hard to get this thing and to make sure that it was going to work. So basically what we're doing is we're creating um, some wings, some wing type things that are going to be um, <laughs> used to like hold on to the, some of the communications equipment and the solar uh, arm and that way we can you know keep this thing um, controlled. Uh, we need some electric pieces. I'm actually going to be putting um, three of these in each of the arms plus a couple more. So we've got plenty of um, thrust even though we're using the ion thrusters so they're not um, actually that powerful relatively. And we're going to put one of these here and we actually need a second one of them. So let's throw it right there, and then we want this. So we'll rotate that, put it right, right here, and now we need to go back to our electric, not, not this one, our electric module, and we're going to put a couple batteries here. And basically, we need a lot of batteries on this craft, because... Um, actually getting enough solar panels or R RTGs or something to keep this thing fully, uh, like, keep it fully stocked on fuel would be difficult. So we're going to rely on batteries in addition to solar panels like we normally do. Nothing super special there. Uh, then we're going to go here. We're going to put some big, big batteries right there and there. And we're actually going to go utility and we're going to go ahead and start to um, assemble the secondary area here because it makes sense to do this all at once. 
rather than sort of doing one part of it here and one part of it there and switching through a bunch of menus and whatnot. So here are our solar panels. Uh, that one goes right here. And now we can go back to our electric and put the three or put three more of these ion thrusters. Uh, we're going to go right here, put our other battery something like this. Okay. And then we can put one final ion, well, two final, one per side right there. We're going to use a small battery uh, right, right here to create a space, a little standoff distance, because what we're going to do is we're going to put communication dishes. I, I realize they're not really communication dishes, they're just, um, you know, different, <laughs> different docking ports, but I like to pretend that they're communication dishes, okay? Uh, so, we'll put these here. Uh, we're going to put these little parachutes on them, and that will be for for nice and um, decorative purposes. Now, let's talk about what we want to do with the rest of this thing. I'm going to put a docking port here, and we're going to put... We're not done here. We need other communications equipment. So we'll put this right here in the middle. Something like, like this... Now let's let's actually move it down one more right there right that looks good so then we'll put another one right here flip this one over there we go so that's nice and balanced and we're going to do the same thing with these uh parachutes to make it look like I, I'm not sure some piece of radio equipment that goes through and you know, does stuff. Um, you know, radio isn't necessarily my strong suit as far as knowledge goes, so I don't really know what these pieces would be called, but I'm pretending, and I'm having fun, and that's all that matters. So we're going to put another tank, and we're going to put a docking port, and that way, if I decide at some port, point to make another mission, um, I actually have a place to dock a ship to that would be able to refuel and resupply this. So next, what we want to do, what I want to do with my ship, is I want to put a big telescope on this thing. And, um, you know, I may not be the most knowledgeable when it comes to telescopes, but I know that they, the big ones, the really, really big ones do stuff with mirrors, right? And they use the mirrors and things reflect back and forth. And it, it's something to do with like collecting more light and whatnot. And that is used to like amplify the, um, well, the, the image, right? So we're going to do something sort of like this. And then we're going to build a little teeny cage around it. Um, just something, something like this. And we'll put... Oops, that's the wrong button. We want to do... We want to flip that over. And then we want to rotate this. And rotate this one. Something like this. And then I can put put some of these and I'm actually just gonna go with like two of these two blocks um, just so things match and they're nice and I like them better and we're gonna put another port like that and then we need one final module here so let's Let's say that we want this parachute. So we've got we've got a fully assembled satellite that looks something like this, right? Now, 
This is far too big to fit in a fairing, so we're going to have to do some special stuff to get this to actually connect into the fairing, right? Um, basically, for now, I'm just going to take all of this junk and I'm going to move it down here because I don't want to um, accidentally delete it or use it or whatnot, so we'll just kind of throw it all down here. like this good and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck it up in here and flip it over and call it good so let's talk about holding this thing in place we don't actually have like anything right that can grab onto this thing because uh, not, not what I wanted if we go and try and put a separator here it's it's not going to do anything. I don't think a big separator is going to work either. Or even a really, really big separator. Yeah, none of the separators work. So, really the only way we can do this is by using docking ports. And, you know, if some of you guys have seen some of my other videos, you'll know that I like to attach and then do some little scaffolding type things. Um... And that will be our connection point. And then we're going to go through and we're going to put some RCS thrusters on these pieces here. Something like, like this. That looks like it's in the middle. Um, hmm. Do I need to put another one of those or can I just, can I just do this? I think I'm just going to do this. And can I put that directly in the middle? I really can't because then it would be like interfering with the um, dish and I don't want it to be interfering with the dish. So how about we put those right there and we'll back this one up and then we'll uh, rotate this one around and stick it on the end here. So that looks pretty good. And, now nah, we, we don't need any more. Um, I do want to put something else on this. Uh, something like, like right here or something. Let's pretend this is some sort of magical equipment. <laughs> I don't know what it would be. Um, hey, actually I do. Let's say it's uh, some heat radiators because, you know, stuff in space gets hot. Right? <laughs> so we've got some, some uh, radiators to help cool the station down. Uh, then we are going to continue with our fairing. And we want to just, you know, keep making the fairing bigger, uh, get, it, get it ready uh, so we're not way behind on the fairing and we can try to space things out better using it. Now, when I set this thing up and I put this six, uh, is that a six? Yeah. No, it's an 8, excuse me, when I put this 8 um, block um, set of structural members, it brings me right over here, which is centered now, so I can take and set this up, and what we're going to do is we're going to put a little teeny fuel tank here, and this fuel tank's going to be used um, by this little scaffolding member here um, to go through and do some assembly in space. So we're going to put some more RCS thrusters on it to hopefully keep this sort of balanced. And then we're going to put a separator right here. And this is where we're going to attach attach this stuff. Attach the um, big bad telescope. So we want to grab each of these pieces, rotate them three clicks, and then we can use them to um, begin assembling the telescope. So here we go. I don't need to rotate this one because I don't feel like it. Good. Uh, we want to put this block here. One, two, three. There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. this here and then this one right 
here. Now, um, we want that, and then we want to rotate that docking port so it's right there. And finally, put these pieces there. So there's our caged telescope piece. All right, so what we're going to do now is put another module on this. We're going to put um, this module, which is going to be used to finish circularization. So this is going to basically be a final stage, a, a uh, no, this is going to be a second stage. We only need two stages in this one because I put a very, very powerful um, relatively to my designs, a very, very powerful first stage on this one. So we're going to start closing this, start um, making it narrower, more narrow. And I think that's, that's what we want right there. We can go back to our basic down, put this, we need a broadsword, even though if we want to be really technical, a broadsword is not, uh, does not have high enough thrust um, proportionally to this craft to do too much to it. We're going to be in space, so it doesn't matter as much. Get over there. I can't have two videos where I mess up on the, <laughs> on the placement of these thrusters and make myself look stupid here. There we go. We gotta have a nice, beautiful rocket. And here we have the payload. We have a big, complicated um, payload, right? Next, we need to launch this thing. So we're gonna go back to our basic parts, and this one we're going to do. I like the three tanks and then a hawk, but this isn't quite enough uh, fuel here. So what we're going to do is we're going to offset this, something like this, and we're going to add four more tanks. So this is going to be the five, be a five uh, engine, five hawk engine version of the um, I don't want to say patented, but the uh, Z <laughs> the special Zira Tri um, Tri engine rocket that I love to use all the time, occasionally with boosters, and then we're going to put some aerodynamic pieces on here. So not that piece, but this piece and this piece, and then we'll just flip it around. And wrong way, but that's okay. There we go. Now we've got. A nice rocket here and if we look at this we are ready to go so let's look at our mass here we have 422.7 tons and a 1.47 thrust to weight ratio hmm I almost feel like I'm forgetting something I feel like my thrust to weight ratio was a little lower the last time I did this when I was testing it. Um, no, well, it looks about right. It's got all the all the random systems to it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I th I thought I I think I get it all. We'll find out when we get it into orbit, or. I guess people won't see the video. <laughs> so now that we've spent 20 minutes building this monstrosity, let's launch it. And basically nothing special needs to happen with the launch because we are just, you know, we're aiming for the edge of the solar system. Ooh, 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 ooh. We need a picture here. So, thumbnail... Right about here. There we go. Now, this seems like a really, really big payload when compared to the size of the rocket, but, you know, I, I suppose if we want to be really technical here, the uh, payload contains a lot of structural members and small pieces, so it's not, it's not very heavy compared to normal. So, we are going to go... Ooh, actually, we need to go back to the build. I know exactly what I forgot. I just I just realized this. 
I, I keep a uh, picture when I'm doing this up on my screen. That way, when I've got these brilliant ideas, it doesn't end horribly, and I can um, more easily keep track of what I need to add. And I just found the piece that's missing. I needed just... Uh, which one is that? Is that the four or is it the two? I think it's the four. No, it's the two. Okay, there we go. So I need, a, with this, I needed a little more fuel than that rocket could provide me. Um, but it probably wouldn't have been a big deal if I didn't have it. So, one, two, three. Um, something's still not right. What isn't right? Why do I have to break these things? Oh dear. 399. Let's get all my pieces right. 427.3, 427.7. Hey, 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 that actually works. Uh, so my mass is the same, and my thrust to weight is now the same, so I think I've got everything. All I need to do is fix my fairing. So we need to go one more space, put that here. We need one more aerodynamic fairing, just like that. Actually, I don't like that one. Let's put this one instead, so I'm not having so many different, like, areas where it's like thinning down and coming back and whatnot. So, what we want to do, what we want to pay attention to here is that these uh, aerodynamic cones are at the, the uh, a, a lower level than the, the fairing, because if they aren't, the fairing will get stuck on them. And we don't want that to happen, because we want the fairing to go away. So there we go. There we are, 1.554.27. Yes, there we are. We now have the correct mass and the correct thrust to weight ratio from before. So now, <laughs> now we can launch this thing and I'm going to take another quick thumbnail. Bam. Great here. Perfect. All right. So let, oh, I never, why did that switch on me? Really? Now I got to fix that for people. Uh, so this one, this one needs to go away, and we will add a new module like that. Why are there... Actually, I know exactly why there are so many problems with this rocket, because this rocket is so big and uh, difficult and um, wonderful. Yeah, let's say wonderful. One, two, three, four, five. There we are. So, we can zoom out and... You know, since we're just going to the edge of the um, sphere of influence of Earth, we don't really need, we aren't really aiming for a specific target. We just want to launch. And we're going to make a nice gravity turn with this. We have fairly low thrust to weight, so we're going to have to be careful um, when it actually comes to launching this thing. We want to make sure we're on point with our turn. Because if we aren't, we're going to run out of fuel. And if we're still in the atmosphere when we have to stage with this one, uh, there's a chance that the broadsword isn't going to have enough um, thrust to actually push us out of the atmosphere. So we want to be very careful with that. We want to make sure that um, we get our apple apps out of the atmosphere, but we go uh, 260 degrees. We go horizontally enough that we actually increase our horizontal speed relative to the planet. So we basically want to follow the path. Get to your 60 degrees at 5 kilometers and then follow your path. Maybe be a little above it, a little below it, just you know, sort of keep an eye on it. Um, 
what we can also do is as we're going up once we get to like 25 kilometers something like something like this we can lower our thrust down to like 20 percent make sure we don't lower it too much such that we are losing um, velocity we want to keep gaining velocity and basically what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that uh, we we have enough fuel to make it out of the atmosphere by just continuously uh, boosting at the low thrust and at the same time we're going to make sure we raise our apple apps we're definitely going to make it so i'm going to turn radial in a little bit so we can start putting more fuel towards going sideways rather than necessarily up and we can we're definitely going to make it to orbit so let's go back to like full speed here maybe slow ourselves down just just keep pushing our apple apps away from us that's fine we should have basically the perfect amount of fuel here to circularize so we're going to actually want to be careful that we don't raise our apple apps too high all right so what we want to do i know this is counterintuitive like this is not this is against our goal but there we go uh, we actually need to get rid of our fairing all right so we're gonna zoom right in make sure we don't hit like the solar panel pop the fairing and then we can give it one last little puff oh that's wrong I want to separate and then we can turn the engine engine on there it is and now we can just um, sort of work our way around our orbit at you know basically apple apps will just keep burning now where we don't have any specific target other than just the edge of earth's sphere of influence we can just you know once we get close to apple apps we can um, start burning again and we're just going to keep burning with um, <laughs> this broadsword until we get right, right to the edge oh ooh one one second though because before we actually before we actually do this we want to reassemble this thing i forgot about that that wouldn't have been good let's let's see the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate these all right we can turn our rcs off and just rotate uh, let's turn it this way that way when we switch to this module we can just sort of drive it right in go back to the map those should harmlessly um, smash into the planet. They're gonna they're gonna land in the ocean, right? We don't have to worry about them hitting anybody. Uh, <laughs> so now we can just use our RCS thrusters to drive this um, in and dock it. And like I said, we're going to be using the broadsword for its superior thrust here um, to do most of the required. Um, burning two apple apps and then once we're at apple apps uh, it's gonna be fairly simple and not that um, fuel and thrust intensive to circularize ourselves you know way out in space basically so just dock very gently here we don't want to break this thing now and then we're gonna go and separate this piece right here so boom all right so what did we keep hold of we kept a hold of this so let's let's do something something like this and we just rotate ourselves to make sure it uh purely to make sure that it's not going to reattach while we're trying to switch our pieces here so we'll switch to it all right and now we can flip this thing around be careful it's very nimble because it's got a lot of thrust for a very small module uh where is it so here are the rcs thrusters and since we're basically straight up and down it's going to be nice and easy to actually um 
maneuver this into place. Be careful because it doesn't have any thrust on the telescope portion, so therefore it's going to want to rotate on you. So something like this, very slowly, boom, in position. Now, what we can do is grab this, send all the fuel from this little module right here, send it over to here, and into these tanks. Okay, so we have 9% fuel left. Now, one thing I was careful about that I didn't necessarily mention is that I kept my periaps uh, fairly low because we're going to um, go through and remove this at our Apple apps. So right about, right about here, what we can do is disconnect via the separator right there. Bam. So it's going to shoot off into the distance and uh, we can check our periaps. We're actually going to hit, uh, make our way into the atmosphere so we don't have anything to worry about. But what we can do is we can lower our periaps actually. And if we do that, it'll smash harmlessly into the planet. And, and I, I know I said smash harmlessly, kind of goes against, you know, smashing. Um, <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean, right? And that should take care of all of the random modules that we don't care about. And we can switch back to the telescope, which is right here. Still in orbit, 31.7, okay. So we'll go around the planet, and then at periaps, we will once again start burning. And this time, we aren't going to stop until we are basically at the <laughs> edge of the Earth sphere of influence. So right about here, turn a thruster on, and we can just burn for, like, literally forever here. And I suppose if we really wanted to, we could um, add the electric thrusters, the ion thrusters into this to make it, uh, well, basically make it accelerate a little faster. But I'm not going to because, uh, just because, I don't want to. We're going to use this one. It's going to take a little bit of time because we are accelerating quite a lot um, because we need to raise our Apple apps quite a lot and we're basically going to be raising it to 29 kilometers so that's it's going to take a little while but once we get close to the moon once we get close to the moon's um, orbital path it's going to just shoot right up there so we don't have too much to worry about So, just about to pass 1,000 kilometers, and maybe, yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't think that it's going to be worth it to, like, time-lapse this, um, <laughs> this little, uh, segment here, because it's not going to take that long. We're basically at the point where it's going to shoot right up there, and then, you know, the time lapse would be over, so then all of the extra editing I'd have to do would not really be that much of a time save for anybody. But here we go. We're at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, yeah, see how, see how fast this is shooting up now? We're aiming for something that is really roughly 29 kilometers. It's pr 
probably not going to work getting it exactly on 29, and then we're actually probably going to have to fix our orbital path anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But here's 29. Right there. Oh, 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 right on the nose, 29.8.6. What? How do I, how did I get that close? I, I have no idea. Um, so, there's a little extra fuel in this module. Um, but you really, you really only need a puff of fuel to deorbit this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gonna accelerate time because we need this to go way way out here way 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 out here right about there perfect now which direction we need to rotate it this way and we're going to do this, stopping at right at Apple, uh, not Apple Apps, right at Prograde. I'm going to start to raise this just a little bit um, because we don't want to use too much fuel. We can probably get to like a thousand kilometers. Let's call that good right there, only because I'd like to be safe. And then we are going to separate this, and once again we will rotate. Uh, we don't we don't really need to rotate this, do we? Probably, yeah. Let's rotate it. Just push that away, just like this. Okay, there we are. What I want to do is switch to this and hope it's not inside the other one. No, it is not. All right, now there we go, flip it around 180 degrees, go retrograde, and we want to deorbit this thing. And it's going to take so little fuel. Oh dear, what have I done? What have I done? Oh, I have a moon encounter. Interesting. Uh, let's, where am I relative to that? Okay, so let's use our RCS thrusters to make sure we miss the moon encounter. Good. I'm not going to smack into this thing. <laughs> and we are safely going to deorbit this, so I'm just going to leave it. We're going to switch back to our satellite. We're going to rotate it prograde here. I don't know why I chose this way, because I mean this is technically the long way around. And what we're going to do is turn on our solar panels, or open up our solar panels, and then turn on all of the ion engines. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we can zoom out and we can just go down to like 0.1% thrust, like really, really low thrust, and just fire them and make sure all of them are indeed firing, which they are. Okay, so now we can go straight to Apple Apps. And we want to be doing most of our maneuvering here at Apple Apps because that way uh, our, our maneuvers are going to be nicer and cleaner. And we're not going to have, hopefully, not going to have to do as much adjusting. And basically, we have a little bit more power draw, then we have thrust. So uh, we just need to be careful that we don't run out of um, energy, which we shouldn't. It shouldn't happen. We can go radial in and or out here to try and adjust our Apple apps at the same time as we're adjusting our Perry apps. It's not really going to work because at this like altitude, Altitude's really the wrong word at this point. At this um, orbit, like, what have I done? Why is that come hold, hold up here? Hold up. Is this thing going fast enough that it just phased through the Earth <laughs> and continued to go in orbit? All right, let's, 
We're going to deorbit this thing the right way. Watch this. In style. Cannot warp below 25 kilometers. All right, there it goes. It's gone this time. Take that. All right. Boy, that was a very sharp deceleration. Now, where is this? What we need to do is go back around to our Apple apps. There it is. That module's gone. <laughs> now we need to just continue raising our periaps, which at this point we can probably go right down to like 1%, 2% thrust. Uh, well, maybe not quite yet, but like 10% like thrust is all we need to finish raising our Apple apps here. 2980. So we've gone a little bit too far, actually. Because we want to be exactly at 29. So we're going to turn back to retrograde now. And we're going to go down to 0.1% thrust. Maybe, well, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And we're just going to lower our periaps. All right, 300. So, 29.8. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to turn off some of our thrusters here. And hopefully the reduced thrust will be um, <laughs> better. So it's just those two in the center. And now we can use our much lowered thrust to have better control over our orbital trajectory here. We're going to go down to a periaps of exactly 29 kilometers. Two, one, 29,000 kilometers. I think I just said 29 kilometers. Oh boy, sometimes, sometimes I think that I should pay attention more. Other times I wonder why I say weird things, but either way, we're at exactly 29,000 kilometers. We're going to accelerate time. We are going to go exactly to the periaps, because remember, if we're not at periaps, we're going to be changing our orbital height a little bit when we're burning retrograde, um, and it's just easier this way. So we'll go to the periaps point as close as we can to retrograde, and then we can just raise this uh, thrust a little bit. We don't want to go too much. And we want to be very careful with the periaps here. So now we can probably go down to 0.1%. Alright. Sorry, this, this requires concentration on my part. <laughs> All right, so now we can just tap, tap, tap on and off. See how that flipped around? We are now at a perfect orbital um, altitude of 29,000 kilometers. We are going to point this majestic beast out into space. Look at that thing. It's like, uh, um, like a, a dragon. Yeah, let's go with dragon. I'm going to say dragon. It's like a dragon, right? And it's pointing out into space, and we have a deep space telescope, and we have communications arrays. So now we can actually start, like, exploring the solar system. And, yeah, in my head it makes sense that we're able to communicate with the craft that are, you know, way, way out in space. And, yeah, that's, that's about it for this time. So thank you all so much for watching. My name's Zira, and this is the Nocturnal Gaming Network, bringing you Spaceflight Simulator. Have yourselves a wonderful night, everybody!